Now let's talk about mounting the fly controller and PDB to the frames. I'm going to do multi rotor number one first just because it will be the easiest and fastest and then we'll go over to multi rotor number two. It sounds like a very simple thing to do but I'm going to give you all the tips and tricks I have to help you not fry any parts because frying parts is actually incredibly easy if you don't pay attention to what you're doing. On this build, I'm using the Dodo Fly Controller with its custom PDB. I do apologize for not showing you how to mount this onto the PDB, but it is very simple. The PDB has four of these pin headers, like on the PDB itself, and then it has two more over here for power and ground. You just snap the Fly Controller right on top of those pin headers, solder them in place, and then you can trim off the excess with your wire cutters. The PDB has foam on top, so the flag and tour is not actually contacting the PDB, and then there's more foam on the bottom side, so this is uh, basically soft mounted. I do highly recommend putting electrical tape on the bottom side, because these pin headers that's in the PDB, once you screw this down, the pressure is actually going to make those pin headers come in contact with the carbon fiber. And carbon fiber does conduct electricity, so as soon as you plug in the battery, your flight controller would fry. It's actually happened to me before, actually quite a few times. And it's not just in this situation. On all my PDBs, I put electrical tape on the back side. For example, if... Let me back up. That is if I am not using standoffs on my PDB, which 90% of the time I don't. I mount my PDB directly to the frame. Because there are pads on the back side, as soon as you plug in a battery, it's going to fry. Like, there's no ifs about it. It will fry. Even if my PEBs like this, that do not have pads on the back side, I still put electrical tape on the back side because you can see all these tiny little holes. Once you start soldering your wires in place, the solder can flow through those holes and once again come in contact with the frame and it's going to fry. I just put electrical tape on the back side and then I put it on top of uh, you know something like this you don't mind cutting up and then I just trim out the uh, edges you know all the way around the PDB to make it nice and clean looking something like this and then I just punch holes through it with my razor blade so now with that out of the way uh, as far as mounting this anytime you mount PDBs and fly controllers uh, you preferably want to use nylon nuts standoffs bolts washers all that stuff because nylon does not transmit vibrations as much as steel does so for this one, because my bolts will be contacting the flagging chore, I will be using nylon, even though it is already soft mounted. But this will help it a little bit more. So on the back side, I'm just going to drop my nylon bolt through there, hold it in place with a screwdriver, stick my flight controller on, and then I'm going to put a nylon nut right on top of that to hold the flight controller and PDB in place. And then I'll do that three more times. And there we go. It's bolted in place. That simple. Which is the exact opposite of what we are about to do on this build. But it's for good reason. I know people are going to say, well, you should have mounted it like this. You should have done that. You should have done this. But the thing is, this is your multi rotor Not mine. Not his or hers. Your dad's. Your mother's. Not your grandmother's. This is your multi rotor So build it however you want. Like I said in the last video, many of you told me that uh, I mounted these arms on wrong. And like I said, I did that on purpose for good reason, because if I ever break an arm, replacing the arm is going to be much easier with them on the bottom. Not only that, but I also did this because I am not using the PDB that comes applied with this frame. I'll be using this PDB, which has a 5 volt regulator, 12 volt regulator, and LC filter all built into one. And I chose to go with this because it will make our uh, powering the camera and video transmitter I've selected easier. Plus, we get that uh, extra filtering, which will make our video feed a little bit nicer. So for this one, as I said before, you preferably want nylon bolts and nuts and everything else. But uh, in this case, I will be using steel bolts because it doesn't matter. Because we will be soft mounting the flagging chore with these things. I played around with a lot of different uh, setups and this is the one I settled on. This is a 14 millimeter M3 bolt. I'm going to put this through the bottom side. Then if I were to mount the PDB right on top of this, it's not going to fit flush. Uh, because you know, like I was saying, I like to mount my PDBs right on top of the frame. That's not going to work in this case because of these bolts being in the way. So we need to bring it up a little bit, but instead of using a full standoff, I'm just going to use 
uh, one of these little M3 nylon nuts. And that's going to give me enough distance just to get off of these bolts. Okay, now I've got all four of the nylon nuts on. If I mount the PDB, I don't know how well you guys can see through here, but it's not contacting those bolts. And I'm not putting electrical tape on the bottom side of this PDB because, like I said, it's not on top of carbon fiber and it's not touching the steel bolts. So, uh, either way, we're good. Though, if you want to put electrical tape on the back side of this, it's not going to hurt anything. If anything, it's going to help. So, if you want, go ahead. As far as which way am I going to mount this, we can have our main battery leads coming directly out the back, or we could do it coming out the side. The PDB that comes with it is designed like this, so if you were to take your battery, which would be mounted about right here, and then you can take this XC60 connector and run it down, and you would have another XC60 soldered directly to that, and it would just plug right in. Personally, I am not going to be doing that because I have had the worst luck with the propellers cutting my battery leads. So I'm going to completely avoid that and just have my battery leads coming right out the back. But once again, do it however you want. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and put some blue Loctite on all four of these uh, steel bolts. Then take our flight controller soft mounts and go ahead and run those on. For the flight controller, like I said, I'm going with the uh, Omnibus F4. This is a clone because it did come from Banggood. It does not have the SD card reader. That's how you know it's a clone. But uh, other than that, they it's going to perform the same. It's going to do the same job. Hopefully, we'll find out. I haven't used it yet. Hopefully, everything works. When it comes to mounting flight controllers, there's typically an arrow on the flight controller. And I'm not talking about this arrow because this arrow is actually pointing to the top of the processor, uh, which I... I covered that whenever I showed you how to replace a processor in my repair series of videos, but normally there's another arrow that points to the front, but and I get this all the time. Guys tell me, JC, you didn't mount your flight controller right. The arrow isn't pointing to the front. The arrow usually points to the front where the front of the flight controller is by default, but once we go into beta flight, you can orientate the flight controller any way you want. I mean you can have it this way, you can turn it this way, you can turn it upside down and backwards, you can even have it mounted up and down like this if you wanted to. It really does not matter so completely ignore that error. Mount your flight controller in whatever way is best for you. Uh, so things I take into consideration, I want easy access to my USB so my choices are going to be like this or like this. Because I usually mount my receivers right on top of the flight controllers, I usually want my receiver pins being towards the front. Uh, that way I can keep my receiver wires nice and short. So I could do it like this. The only problem though is uh, this voltage regulator is coming in contact with this thing sticking up right here. So I have to mount it like this. But even if I mount it like that, it's still, the bottom of the flight controller is still coming in contact with that piece. So I need to raise this up just slightly, enough to where it's not contacting this, but also to where I still have enough threads so I can put a nut on top. Here are M3 washers, and these are steel washers. Uh, I normally would use something like this, um, maybe try one on all four. If that's not high enough, then I would put two uh, you know, per corner, and then that would be high enough. Now here's the other problem. If I were to use these steel washers, this steel washer would be coming in contact with this capacitor. See how it's touching the capacitor? And normally that wouldn't matter. This does not apply to all flight controllers, it's just some. But if I set my multimeter to the continuity mode, and if I get continuity, it beeps. The corners of this board is not isolated from the rest because flight controllers, well, all PCs. PCBs, they're just giant grounds with the power pins and traces run through the ground and separated from the ground. But the corners, because they're not isolated, will conduct electricity. So this is one giant ground including the corners. With that said, because the corners are not isolated and if this steel washer comes in contact with this capacitor, once you plug in your battery, the flight controller is going to fry. So it's just little things like this that you have to look out for uh, because I know you know guys tell me, they watch one of my videos, JC, I plugged in my battery and something fried, I don't know why. 
it's just little stuff like that that you have to pay attention to. So if I can't mount this like this without it not coming in contact with this, and I can't use steel washers, your other option is going to be nylon washers. They sell nylon washers in the same exact size as the steel washers, it's just nylon. And nylon does not conduct electricity because it's basically plastic. Now I don't have any nylon washers, so uh, I just ran over to my 3D printer and I made some. So let's just pretend that these are nylon washers that I bought from the store. And now I can mount the fly controller. And it's not coming in contact with that little piece. So I'm good. And I still have enough room to put my nylon nuts on top and secure the flag controller, though I'm not going to because the next video will be finishing up the wiring of the ESCs and the signal wires and a few other things like that. So thanks for watching and I will see you there.